All right, welcome to the latest edition of Mob Talk. I'm Dave Schrankweiser. And I'm George Anastasia. George, we get this request all the time. Tell us who's who in the Philly Mob 2018. We're going to give it to them today. But it's an inexact science, and it's always subject to change. All right, George, our viewers ask for it. We're going to bring it to them today. Who's who in the Philadelphia Mob? Let's start right at the top. Joey Merlino is kind of the name we always hear, still the boss of the Philly mob. Yeah, most people would say he's the boss, and I think uh, from law enforcement perspective, that's the way they've got it set up. You know, he's operating in Florida rather than in Philadelphia, but that doesn't really seem to matter. Uh, you know, Joey's got standing, Joey's got a history. Although you have to say, with some of the older guys, the guys that will come back, the Scarfo era guys, uh, I don't think they would fall in line behind them. It's just that I don't think they're that active right now. I don't think he has any standing with them, frankly, from what I hear. They no, I think there's a long... Uh, kind of troubled history between him and, and his faction of young guys and the older Scarfo related guys who are now back out on the street. All right, it's always about the hands-on situation, who's running the, allegedly running, the day-to-day -day operation on the street. And, and there's an interesting name that has now surfaced to be that person, a uh, longtime Philadelphia figure, uh, been in the news before, never been arrested for anything serious. Mike. Mikey Lance Lancelotti, yeah, you street can, boss. You can call him the quiet man. I mean, he doesn't say much. According to people, he's very reluctant to get involved in conversations, which is probably a smart thing. Yeah. But, you know, the interesting thing during the that infamous New York investigation that sucked up Joey Molino, there was a Christmas party um, in New York. Yes. And Joey apparently went up there with some guys from Philadelphia, inclu including Lancelotti. And John Rubio, the informant, said that Molino introduced Lancelotti and said, this is the boss of Philadelphia. So, you know, that, that figures into the mix. When the feds are trying to figure out the pecking order, right. that certainly carries some weight. Is it a street boss? Is he above Molino, below Molino, with Molino? As I said, it's not an exact science. These guys don't issue an annual report yeah. to the board of directors. Hey, here's our we're, chart. We're this exactly. is who's who, right? So, we're, you know, we're, we're going on street information, law enforcement information, trying to sketch something right, out. But let's make it clear. That's court testimony, court document federal investigation right. where Joey's allegedly saying that the interesting thing there is the feds paid twenty five thousand dollars to Rubio <laughs> party. To, th yeah. to throw that party to kind of suck all Merlino's guys up to New York yeah. so they had a little bit of jurisdiction but uh, interestingly if they got anything out of that they got that one little fact yeah and I think Dominic Grandy was also present at that party right. which you know the fact that he's present to the feds says he's somebody as well so yeah. I mean that's the way they put all this kind of stuff together all right let's go to uh, Joe Legambi Former sure. boss, uh, when Joey Merlino went to jail in 2001, he took over, allegedly, ran the show for 13 or 14 years. Yeah. Now he's home, relaxing in South Philly, all I can tell. Appears to be on the shelf, but is he in a, a kind of consigliere mode here, you think? I mean, How, I what would you call I would think so. I mean, you know, Legambi is retired and happy to be, but he's one guy who kind of bridges the gap between the old heads from the Scarfo era and the young guys. I mean, Legambi was, has a foot in, the, in both camps. So if there ever is a, a problem, Dispute. he would be the kind of guy you would yeah. go to to try to settle it because he does have standing with both groups. I don't think he's very active. I think he was happy to walk away from the racketeering problems he had and the, you know, the hung, the two hung juries. I don't think he wants any way to get heavily involved again, but I think he's still benefiting from what he's done in the past and where he stands right now. All right, let's talk about uh, alleged former acting boss, Steve Mizone, who, uh, when Legambi was in prison for uh, about a year or two, right. awaiting trial, and Joey was still in prison or just out of prison in Florida, it appeared Steve Mizone was kind of running as the street boss here doesn't look like that right now. He also looks to have taken a little bit of a backseat. And I think, you know, I, one of the things I think you have to say about Steve Mazzone is he understands the lay of the land and he's no dummy. And I think he wouldn't want to be boss. If you look at the history of Philadelphia since Angelo Bruno, every Philadelphia mob boss is either dead or in jail. So why do you want to be the boss? Right. I think guys like Steve Mazzone, guys like Johnny Changalini, they've been burned. They don't want to go back to jail. And are they doing stuff on the streets? Who knows? Are they living well? It appears to be. But I don't see them as major players anymore. We talk about Steve Mazzone's smarts. Let's go back to the Billy Vizi hit, the brother of John Vizi. There was a lot of information on the street that Steve Mazzone counseled against doing that hit, even though they've never been convicted of it, that he counseled against doing any kind of violence to anybody connected with Vizi because he knew where that was going to go. Uh, and John Vizi was a good witness, testified, buried the stamp for mob, but you don't want to mess with that end of things. And he was supposedly the one saying, don't do it. I mean, yes. I mean, Stevie, again, he's a street smart. He understands that. The, the risk 
versus the reward was way out of whack. And I think he proved it proved that he was right the way things played out. All right, John Changlini, you mentioned him before, also seems to have quieted down, had some health problems late last year, earlier mm. this year, also seems to be kind of shifted into a more relaxed mode here. Again, I mean, this is a guy who's been around. His father uh, is, is out now and probably giving him some advice. You know, it's about making money and taking a low profile. These old time guys, they go back to that Bruno era, make money in that headlines. Don't call attention to yourself. And I think if these guys are still players, they're taking that philosophical approach. I, yeah, nobody needs to know who I am. I don't need to go to the, to the clubs on Delaware Avenue. I just, uh, I'm here, I'm living my life, leave me alone, that kind of thing. All right, we'd be remiss if we went past uh, George Borghese at this point. Uh, everybody I talk to says, uh, draw the arrow down, he's off the totem pole. He says, uh, appears to be only involved in legitimate businesses, haven't heard his name in connection with any kind of criminal activity. Uh, Describe him for me now. Well, I mean, I, obviously, I mentioned one, it's Legambi's nephew. Yes. Two, he was a major player back then in the Molino era and was involved in those trials. And, and again, he walked away based on some uh, the hung juries, never was proven guilty. And I think this is a guy who realizes there's money that can be made legitimately and he's out there trying to make it. He's out there hustling. And I think he's using his, his intelligence and his skills to try to channel that into legitimate businesses. Are guys around them still involved? It appears to be. Is that going to burn them? Who knows? I mean, I think that's something that everybody's concerned about. But yeah, right now, he's off the chart, and, and if you would have talked to him, he'd probably tell you he's happy to be off the chart. All right, let's talk about loyalty a little bit here while we're talking about Borghese, because Joey went on trial. Joey had to prep mm -hmm. for that trial. Joey had to listen to tapes, things like that. Everybody I talk to and what we've seen is George Borghese was the guy standing right next to him there, helping him prep for that trial. And you can say what you want about Borghese, but he's always loyal to the guy on yeah. top. He, I think he was like a paralegal in that case. He and Joey yeah, went good over description. All, yeah, he yeah. went over all those tapes. They probably knew the case as well as or better than Eddie Jacobs going in. So, and I think it worked to Joey's advantage in that, again, that, that was a trial that ended with a hung jury too. So yeah, I mean, and his loyalty to Joey is unquestioned. The, the, I think the problem, if there's a problem down the road, and these, these two groups factionalize and start to go at one another, then then it may become a difficult situation. Right now, I think everybody's interested in keep it low, make money, don't make headlines. That's what it's about. All right, George, let's go down one rung on the ladder to the capo level. And the captain we're hearing about all the time these days, who's in the middle of some kind of investigation, is Dominic Randy. Where, where is he right now? What's his status? Interesting. I mean, Dominic Grandy is the face of the next generation of the mob. He's the younger generation. And he's surfaced as a major player. He's been named, uh, again, he went to that Christmas party, which indicates he has some standing. And he's been identified in that ongoing investigation in New Jersey as a capo in the organization. And at least one person in his crew, Salvatore Piccolo, has been jammed up in that drug case. So it remains to be seen what other problems he's going to have. but. Certainly, he's somebody of interest to the feds. They've got him on their radar. They've always been interested in him since back with the Anthony Nicodemo DPA trophy. hit. So he's a guy they're aware of, and from everything we can determine, and I think what the feds believe, he's a capital in the organization, has got his own crew, and has been out there wheeling and dealing. All right, so let's go to the, uh, the old heads, as they call yeah. them. I don't like that term, because I'm an old head, too. Uh, uh, as are you, I hate I'm to tell you, George, you, yeah. but uh, Whatever all right, you the old are, guys, how yeah. about the old guys? Okay. Uh, let's talk about the Scarfo guys a little bit. Yeah. Uh, very low key, involved in legitimate businesses, seem to be doing well at legitimate businesses, and uh, not making a lot of noise. I mean, Phil Narducci is a prime example of yeah. that. I mean, everything we've been told, he's busting his, his, his tail tail, whatever, <laughs> work in that restaurant. I mean, right. and, and it's- Chicks in South Philly. It's been successful. And I think you're seeing that with some of these other guys gotten involved in real estate. Again, these guys were burned. These guys spent 18, 20, 25 years in jail. Human nature, you don't want to go back. And is it worth it? I mean, what do you want to gain by going back into that underworld, which by and large, the Philadelphia underworld has been riddled with informants, yeah. cooperators, and electronic surveillance. I mean, the Philadelphia crime family, among other things, is probably the most reported crime family in America. There's always somebody up on a wire or, or somebody wearing a body wire. So there's a lot of risks involved. Again, risk versus reward. What do you want to do? These guys, I think, realize you can make legitimate money. Let's go out there and make it. Joe Pungitor is another example of that right. uh, in the real estate business, uh, buying, flipping, renovating homes, doing really well. Go back to 1988, I believe. There's a tape called the I Have a Dream tape where he says, his dream 
is to buy and sell like a dozen homes, keep flipping them, making money, and going legit, appears to be doing that, and not only doing it, but doing it rather successfully. Yeah, so. entrepreneurial. I mean, these guys are entrepreneurial, and that, that's one example of it. Again, it, it, you know, these guys are channeling their energies, challenging, channeling their intelligence in a different direction. Is it going to last? I don't know. I mean, that works as long as you're making money. Do you get to a point where you're in a hole and you're not making money? Do you make a bad choice? I don't know. That's something that law enforcement's always watching. And law enforcement is a little reluctant to accept that, yeah, these guys have found the way now and they see the light and they realize they don't believe any of that. So these guys are always going to have a difficult time getting up that ladder, but a lot of them are trying. But the feds always say, you know, if these guys put their mind to it in a legitimate way, they could probably be pretty successful. And for some of those guys, they are. Yeah, I think that some are proving that. The other thing the feds always say is take a look at Joe Merlino, spent 12, 14 years in jail, comes out of jail, no legitimate employment. He's got a, 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 a driving a nice car, living in a nice condo down in Florida. He's opening a restaurant. Where's that coming from? That's the suspicion. When these guys live well, how are they living well? What are they doing to support themselves? All right, George, the numbers in Philly are pretty fat, so to speak. 25 to 30 made guys. Anthony Staino, Damian Canalicchio could be coming home in a couple of years. That's even more numbers. They keep adding, but there could be subtractions too. Yeah, absolutely. If the feds would like to see another case take some of these guys off the streets, it's never going to stop. Okay. See you next time.